Welcome back to another knife thumb review. Today we have another great new knife from the custom knife factory MCAT line and it is the MPAT designed by Anton Malyshev. Let's get into it. MPAT is the fourth knife in the MCAT lineup. MCAT is a budget friendly sub brand of custom knife factory. I've done a full review on the previous MCAT models, the Loro and the Meta. Make sure you check them out for more info about those knives and the MCAT brand in general. That way I can keep this video short and sweet. Let's see what comes in the box, or the pouch I should say, with a knife that is priced at about 300 US dollars or 455 Australian dollars. In typical custom knife factory fashion, you will get a high quality pouch, as well as a microfiber cloth, certificate of authenticity, a full set of spare hardware, and even a spare pocket clip. Isn't that awesome for such a well priced knife? With all of that extra good stuff, you also get this. An elegant, classy, great looking, hard firing, drop shot is smooth, sleek and sexy beast of a knife which is the MCAT MPAT. As for the specs, the overall length of the knife is 21.5 cm. Blade length is 92 mm according to Custom Knife Factory. I actually measured the blade to be 95 mm and the cutting edge to be 92 mm. I guess Custom Knife Factory is measuring the cutting edge only. The blade thickness is 4 mm and the blade material is Bowler M390. Handle thickness is just shy of 15 mm at the widest point. And the knife weighs only 138 grams which is impressive for a chunky knife such as this. That lightweight is a result of some crazy internal handle millings. So shall we take the knife apart and perform a little autopsy on it? Why not? I'm sure I can show you an interesting thing or two. Here is the impact stripped down in all its glory. You'll notice straight away that there are a lot more parts in the impact compared to the meta and the construction is more complex. Here is what we have. The blade, the pivot assembly including stainless washers, ceramic bearing washers and the pivot screws. The blade stop pin, the titanium frame with a stainless steel lock bar insert on the lock side and the frame screws. A set of marbled carbon fiber scales with their hardware screws. The titanium backspacer and a titanium pocket clip with the hardware screw. We have a very interesting titanium frame here. Rather than milling weight reduction pockets, CKF has gone with fully skeletonized handle to maximize the weight savings. As a result of that, this substantial knife weighs only 138 grams. The attention to details and the milling quality is outstanding. All of the edges on the cutout sections are deburred and chamfered and the interior of the handle is finished just as nicely as the exterior. Remember that these parts are not visible at all when the knife is assembled. And also remember that the MPAT is only 300 US dollars or 455 Australian dollars. But Custom Knife Factory has finished these parts to the same level as the rest of the knife regardless. Now let me show you how the MPAT is assembled and also show you a few interesting details. The back spacer sits in between the two titanium frames and then the whole frame is put together with these longer hardware screws. Then the carbon fiber scales goes on the top of the titanium frame which is fixed with these little black screws to match the color. On the lock side, the carbon fiber scale has a recess milled into it for the pocket clip to sit in nice and snug. Lock side. This will stop the pocket clip from wiggling around too much. The other side of the scale, where it covers most of the lock bar is also recessed. This allows the lock bar to move back and forth more freely, but not too much. Note that there is no over travel stop on the lock insert, because the carbon fiber scale itself offers that over travel protection. 
Lastly, all hardware screws are made from stainless steel. I think that is the right move for this knife. The stainless steel is harder than titanium, which means the screws are going to be more durable. In a more expensive knife that may not see so much use, titanium hardware is not going to be an issue at all. But in an everyday carry scenario, when you would use the knife on a daily basis and may need to disassemble the knife, often for cleaning and maintenance, having a stainless steel hardware is an advantage. There is also a spare set of hardware included just in case. That wraps up our little knife surgery so now we can check out the knife itself. The impact is a substantial knife. It's bigger, wider and thicker than the metal which I reviewed just before. But as I mentioned earlier, all that extra size and thickness comes at 138 grams only which is excellent for a knife of this size. Let's bring a few knives out for a quick size comparison. Here it is next to a Loro, which was the second knife in the MCAT line. As you can see, the length and the width of the handle is very similar to MPAT. And here it is next to a Koenig Aureus, a very popular knife, which is also really similar in size and width. And here it is next to the Custom Knife Factory 520, which is a very popular knife and a little bit smaller. And lastly, we have the SOG Architect, which is one of my favorite EDC knives. The Empath feels really solid in hand. The thicker handle makes a big difference in terms of comfort and handling. The ergonomic handle fills the hand very nicely, and of course there are no sharp corners or hot spots anywhere. The marbled carbon fiber scales are just stunning. I love the busy pattern and the matte finish on them. They feel very nice to the touch. They are also really high quality and there are no voids anywhere on this carbon fiber material. The scales are set in seamlessly. There is no gap between the carbon fiber and the titanium bolsters. You do feel the change of materials when you run your fingers over them, almost like a tiny little step from titanium down to the carbon fiber, but there is certainly no gap at all. Because this knife is a bolster lock, the lock side looks just as good as the presentation side. We have the exact same scale on the lock side, covering most of the lock cutout, leaving only a small part exposed in the bolster area and that's why it's called a bolster lock. The pocket clip is quite nice. It is shorter than what you see on most knives. Because of that, it has more tension. But that doesn't mean it is difficult to use at all. The pocket clip is expertly designed and milled. There's a large relief underneath the lip of the clip that makes it not only easy to reach out and lift, but also very easy to slip over your pants, no matter how thick the material is. The contact point of the pocket clip with the handle is completely rounded to reduce friction. The smoothness of the carbon fiber also helps with that. Combine all of that together and you will have a pocket clip that is easy to use, has a strong retention and looks great when attached to the pocket. The back spacer is quite long, covering most of the spine of the knife and leaving only a small opening. There is some useful jimping towards the back that should improve your grip, as well as a lanyard hole. There are a couple of small but nice details that you might like. The back spacer has a pointy tip that lines up perfectly against the plunge lines on the heel of the blade, facing each other. I also appreciate that the lock relief is cut internally, so that there is no gaps between the titanium frame and the carbon fiber scale. Now we get to my favorite part, the action. Before I even start talking, I'll let the knife talk for itself.
This is one of the best sounding actions on any knife I have tried. As you saw, the blade deploys with such a speed and aggression that you can feel the kick in your hand. Almost like a handgun recoil. Do you want to see that again? I'm sure you do. The lock bar on the M-pad has plenty of tension. The detent is also on the harder side. That is why it kicks out so hard and you'll hear that loud and hard double thwack, which is a combination of the blade breaking free, the lock bar engaging, and the blade hitting the stop pin. Listen again carefully. The action on this knife is absolutely addictive. You can't help but to do it over and over again. And watch that blade fire away, listen to the knife roar and scream and feel that kickback in your hand. It almost feels like shooting a pistol. The closing is absolutely glass-like, despite the very strong lock bar tension. The blade drops effortlessly and smoothly. The action was very nice out of the box, but it wasn't this smooth. I've used the knife for almost a week, so it's well and truly broken in. After a week, I took the knife apart, cleaned and re-lubricated the pivot, and now it works like a dream. Let me know if you need tips on how to break in your knife and tweak it for the best possible action. The lock engages at around 25-30%, to 30%, which is nice and early. Both sides of the frame have been recessed to let you easily reach in and disengage the lock. The blade is M390 as it's the case with the majority of custom knife factory blades. M390 seems to be the favorite blade for most people, especially in higher quality category, and I can understand why. It really has everything you expect from a great modern steel. The blade is flat ground, the grinds are stone wash as well as a top switch, while the flats are satin. As always with Custom Knife Factory, the blade markings are kept to the bare minimum with only a small logo on the front and the blade seal and serial number at the back. The blade ramps up slightly to create this beautiful harpoon on the top. The swedge actually starts at the same place as well and continues all the way down to the tip. The edges on the spine are rounded off which I like a lot. You can comfortably rest your thumb on the spine of the blade and not worry about sharp corners when you are pressing down hard on the blade. I also like the flowing transition between the blade and the handle. There is a continuation from the handle to the entire length of the blade which I find aesthetically pleasing. After carrying the knife for around one week, I think the M-pad is well worth the price tag and beyond. The milling of the handle is fantastic. The fit and finish is above industry standards. The design is beautiful and classy. The ergonomics are on point. The action is phenomenal and you get all the typical high-end materials as well as the extra bits and pieces that come with the knife. That wraps up this review. Keep the likes coming please and don't forget to subscribe to the channel too.